the importance of this in somatic psychotherapy is we can enter into changing the system either through the story itself, through the emotions, or through the physicality itself. We can enter into the body, which in many ways is a powerful way to enter into the system because it doesn't come up against the same ego-based defenses, the same psycho-emotional defenses. So many times, <clears throat> if I see a postural dynamic or I see a tension dynamic, I might start working with that before I start working with the belief structure because the belief structure is going to be more defended. <clears throat> so, in these, basically what I'm saying is these are reasons why we want to work with the body, with coming into the body, and the fundamental resource that allows us to work well with that is this idea of a body to, body to awareness, embodied awareness, somatic awareness, whatever we want to call it. Those are the fundamental resources that are needed for change to happen. So the question's about that. It's a simple concept, but it's not particularly simple to work with. Just to put, you're talking about the psychophysical parallelism, which is this passing on. No, it's, it's psychophysical parallelism basically is a concept that says that what happens in the body needs to be in balanced alignment with what happens psychically or emotionally. Okay? That we can have a certain amount of dissonance, but we can't sustain that for a long period of time. It's too uncomfortable. So, for example, <clears throat> if I ask you to hold this idea that life is basically joyful, that trust is the, is the fundamental quality of, of social interaction and that, um, and that basically you're a happy person. And then I ask you to tighten your jaw, collapse through your thorax, and tighten your toes as if you have to grip onto the ground. So just do this for a moment. Tighten your jaw, let your neck come forward, collapse through your thorax a bit, and tighten with your toes and tell yourself, life is a happy, 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 safe place. Do you see how it doesn't quite have a place to land? <laughs> That's a breaking of psychophysical parallelism. So what we want to fundamentally do is find out where a person's body is, to bring awareness to that body, and to start to allow that body to start to shift in the direction they want to go and then start to work with the belief structure and the attitudes and the, the felt emotions that are there and work back and forth, helping them kind of ramp up to a new possibility. So this is the, the fundamental theory of um, healing through somatic psychotherapy. Basically, our model of healing is this, is that wounding happens when there's a lack of psychophysical resources. And in order to create healing for that wounding, there has to be an introdu introduction of new resources that allow the person to have the capacity to do things differently. Because if there would have been those resources, if that little girl had, you know, before her father molested her, had a, a button where it would automatically call 911 and the police would come in and interject in some way, or the, the mother was capable of interceding with the father's predation or whatever, then that wouldn't have happened. Or, in some cases, children have enough strength to say no, scream, and run away. In most cases, not. In other words, the resource isn't there. If you had the resource to tell your mother, who was continually shaming of you as a child, no, that's not true. I am a person that's capable. I'm a strong person. I can do this. If you had that resource, which most children don't do in the face of a shaming parent, uh, then that wound wouldn't have happened. The younger we are, typically the fewer resources we have as far as our power to establish our security in the world. And so in the case of those missing resources, the wound happens. Yeah. And it seems to me that's, that's just the parallel of also your, your, your marrying your parents 
own attitudes and their own embodiment, which is probably shame based as well. And so yes. they're just uh, they're just articulating that in that moment to the child what they believe to be true. Yeah. And it's already been expressed in this physical way. Yeah, it's not a magic thing. It gets passed on through physical presence from generation to generation. And then of course there's always, you know, uh, DNA and chromosomes and I mean there's there's on there's a level on that that's happening as well and then experiences build on that so you're never working just with a person you're working with the whole history you ever work with people around their, their embodiment and imagining their parent and getting in touch with how they embody their parent yeah, I do. I usually don't use it as a technique, but what happens is when you come into your, when you have this embodied awareness that we're going to work on all day today, <coughs> and you're working with a person and the memories start coming about their childhood, it is not uncommon to say, oh my God, I'm feeling my mother in me. In other words, they're feeling the parallelism within them that it's an adaptation to the parallelism with their parents. Can I, do, do any of you kind of feel that? Think, think of your, um, your custodial parents. And just, just tune into them and see if there's a resonance between some of the issues you carry and what your father or your mother or your uncle or your siblings carried. And notice, it, notice how it manifests in your body. Maybe a quality of tension or a, a quality of, of joy, maybe. Can you feel that? Can you feel the... It's almost as if somehow there's a link through generation, maybe even with uh, a grandparent that you never met but you heard about. And you could feel... Like, for example, in my family... <coughs> um, I'm a fifth generation Californian. My grandparents came, my great, great, great parents, grandparents came out before the gold rush in covered wagons. Incredible autonomy and independence. And it runs through every generation of my family. We just head out and do things and, you know, you don't give a damn. It's like we're exploring new frontiers. Um, it's just rampant through my family. Well, that's great, but it can be hell in relationship. You know, and people that are very much oriented to the West have a kind of, um, have breaks in their family that's less common on the East Coast, where there's more of a, a bonding into tight community. And it, it can be a felt reality. And that felt reality is a lot of how we perceive ourselves. It's the form of the, of, it's the body ego, the form that the ego identity takes within the physical structure. And in many cases, it's wonderful, but when it's not working, uh, if there's not body awareness and you're not able to work with the body, no matter how much you change the beliefs, it remains kind of a sluggishness. Because if you change the belief and you haven't changed the structure, the belief is going to get pulled back in because the structure keeps implying the particular thing. And so you, there's these very incre incremental changes.